What's going on, golf addicts? David Barnett here of the Tour Junkies. We're back. We are back. We had a little little hiatus. We got Pat Perry here with us. Um, it's going to be a good show. It's the, the Mayacoba Golf Classic from Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Um, how you doing, Pat? What's How's the podcast juice going? Wait, wait a minute. We already have a thumbs down on YouTube. What is going on? Like, Why do we get a thumbs down? We never get a thumbs down. Who's giving a us thumbs a thumbs down, down on, on the live YouTube show? That's now we get a thumbs up to counteract. Okay. okay um, thanks for the thumbs Maybe it was an accidental. I feel like it was an accidental. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like a sentence. What's going on? Um, how you doing, bud? Podcast juice? I'm good. Yeah, I got, got a little uh, vodka with my, my little mixer, normal kind of lemonade mixer. I'm, I'm a little Tito's. I'm, I'm ready to go. Excited to be back after a week off. Um, yeah. Yeah. So. I actually don't have any podcast juice tonight. I am just drinking regular ass water. Not ass water, but just regular water. <laughs> um <laughs> yes ass water i am uh yours truly is recovering from the kisner foundation event on saturday night so yes yes you are yes you are i recover a little better uh than you do mainly because um, you just keep going I can, I can just keep going yeah so um yeah what an event god probably talk about that later. Yeah, we had a great time at the Kevin Kisner Foundation event. We will let's talk about that later. I don't want to I don't want to tick off the hardos that want the uh, you know, they want the golf the, the course breakdown and picks immediately. Um, but we did have a grand time. Um, met some cool guys. Had a, had a good time. Um, but yeah, Pat, I mean, I think we got to come right out and and just say, you know, um, prayers for L2 can you know, this is this is the one year anniversary of El Toucan Gate and the famous Matt Kuchar stiffing that happened with his caddy, um, El Toucan, David Ortiz, not Big Poppy, but the other the other one. Uh, read a little follow up article on him today. Um, uh, he ended up not starting his laundry mat because he didn't want people to take advantage of him, knowing that he had a little extra money. With the Kucher passing on the extra fifty grand, you know he was going to start a laundromat business for his family, but he didn't end up doing that. Um, he's done some other things. He he bought a used BMW, uh, which is good. You know that's cool. Um, but I've all, what he said was his caddying has really taken off at Mayakoba because now everybody that goes to Mayakoba requests El Toucan. They want to have Kucher's caddy. So. Apparently, he's kind of got celebrity. Basically, the article said he's got celebrity status at Mayakoba now as a caddy that everyone wants to have. I mean, would you not? If you were playing Mayakoba, it, you would request El Toucan. Yeah, and then on top of it, you would want to. You tip the hell out of him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Heck yeah. You know, he's sensitive to that. I mean, so, and you, you wrote him a did letter. Did say whether or not he was going to. He was going to caddy in this tournament. It didn't say. It did not specify whether or not he's he's going to be caddying this I year. I wonder. Do you think there'll be like a meetup, like a like a meetup with Cooch, where they like you know have the press there, and you know it's kind of like. Just... No, nah, I don't think there's going to be anything press related. Now it would be interesting mm-hmm. to know if there will be a, a an unpublicized meetup where Cooch like you know pulls mm-hmm. pulls David aside and you know says, "Hey, man." Um, Sorry for being a bunghole. I'm gonna, you know, slide you some more stew here. So I don't know. Maybe not. Probably not. Cooch won't do that. I mean, this has got to be a tough week for Cooch. You know, like you're coming back as a defending champ, but all everybody really can think about is how this is the one year anniversary of everybody on the planet figuring out that you're actually a tightwad butthole. Yeah. You know? It's tough. It's a tough scene. Tough for scene. Cooch. Yeah, yeah. He's probably. I don't think he's too thrilled to defend his title this week, honestly. But it is what it is. You know, you, it is what it is. Let's uh, let's get to it. We're live on YouTube. We've got uh, some folks joining us on YouTube. If you've not started catching the podcast on YouTube, you should. Uh, we are both live on YouTube, and the live video goes straight up to the channel after we're done, so you can go back and watch it. Um, it's gonna be good. It's gonna be a good time, Pat. I am. Uh, I'm excited. Let's uh, let's get to it. Tell us a little bit about this golf course. Yeah, I'm ready to go. So we are at the Mayakoba Classic this week in Playa del Carmen, Mexico. Playa. Playa, 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 Playa del Carmen. Playa, I think it's Playa. Playa, 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 Playa del Carmen. 
you know, Oosh, every almost fell out of my this, chair. You know, every time we get to this tournament, I want to call it Playa. Playa Del Carmen. Anyway, so we're at El Chameleon Golf Club, par 71, just under 7,000 yards, playing 6,987 6, yards. We got Pas Paspalum Greens. Actually, it's, it's a it's a Paspalum surface across the board here, fairways, fairway to green. They've played here since 2007, and it's gradually gotten easier over the years. If you look at the last four to five years, this is typically played one of the easy, as one of the easiest courses on tour, especially if we get a little bit of rain and it plays soft, and I think that's what we're going to get this week. Uh, just, I mean, it's not going to cause a whole lot of delays, but I think we're going to get some rain off and on, especially early in the week. It's going to soften up this course. Huge greens out here, just like you typically see in a resort course. Um, so very easy to hit greens. The par fives are easy. Uh, you got three far par fives. They play 554, 554, and 532. Oh, I mean, that's for these guys, that's just nothing. They should be able to score very easy on there. there. And then also looking at the par threes, you never see par threes this easy. I love this. I love this as far as par threes are concerned. 155. 151 and 116 these guys should be just knocking down pins on these par threes from those distances so i think that is something that um you'll want to look at this week um you know you do have to you got to keep it in the fairway i mean I, I wouldn't say that driving accuracy is necessarily key but if you miss it by a little bit you're in some dense forest you know they got some mangrove forest around you know that this, this course kind of tangles through those type forests. So there's, I mean, you can't be way off. I mean, the, the, the fairways are relatively wide, but I mean, you definitely, uh, you don't want to get into that, that mess. Um, so again, looking for stats for me, this is definitely a ball strikers course. I'm always looking at form when we got uh, a course where, uh, I mean, when, when, you know, you get this time of year and the, these guys have played several tournaments, um, looking at history as well. Um, they've played here, like I said, since 2007. So we got a lot of history. But really scoring, man. I mean, these guys are going to have to come out this week. They're going to have to knock down these pins. They're going to have to score. I think opportunities gained is another good stat to look at. Uh, typically, greens and regulation uh, has been another one that uh, is, is something that's, you know, we've seen these guys uh, fare well in greens and regulation. Um, so that's kind of the, the deal there is looking at past champs. We talked about Cooch last year, Patton Kazire in 2017. Uh, Pat Perez in 2016, G Mac Gal in 2015, and then Charlie Hoffman in 2014. A little note about Charlie Hoffman: since he won in 2014, he has not made a single cut in this event, which I think is just crazy. That's very Charlie Hoffman-like. Uh, it, it is. So there you go. A little quick rundown on El Chameleon. Nice. Yeah, I mean, I took away the same thing. It's a it's a short track. You don't need to hit it a long way here. Uh, of course, that doesn't rule out the Bombers. It never rules out the Bombers. They can always club down, hit their fairways, but it just brings everybody into play. It also being an easier course, like Pat mentioned, uh, your, your winning score probably going to be around 20 under or so, unless the weather turns pretty sour. Uh, the weather is something we need to look at, for sure. You, we do have our first full field event here. Uh, and it's it's like 130 players or something, but we, it's our first full field event with a cut after round two uh, to the top yeah, wow. 65. Yeah. And, yeah, first one we've had in a while. And so that means you're going to likely see, you could potentially see, you know, tea time wave advantages. So come Wednesday, you're going to want to check out the chalk bomb email that will go out. Uh, by the way, I, I have to say, uh, in the last couple of weeks, we have gotten some Wednesday late-breaking caddy insight on the golf course. Okay, and I was thinking about this. This is very important. Don't tune this out. Um, we've got some late-breaking caddy insight on the golf course. In fact, for the uh, for the WGC, the information we got completely changed our strategy for Monday night uh, because we learned about lack of overseeding and kind of how the rough was responding to that from a player who had been there uh, a couple of years, and we, we a caddy that had been there a couple of years. We got that late. Now, here's the thing. We have a number of caddies, players, that give us little tips here and there, um, and we always want to pass those on to our followers. But we want to really pass it on to our most loyal followers, and we don't want to share that with the world, because if we share it with the world, it's, it, it, we lose a little bit of our edge, and... Our friends that trust us with this information don't necessarily want us broadcasting it all over the, the interwebs that we have it. 
So ideally, we put that information in the chalk bomb email. But I feel like we need a code word, Pat, or a code phrase. I feel like we need a code word or a code phrase every week where if we tweet it or we put it on our Instagram stories, so if you follow at tour underscore junkies on Instagram or at tour underscore junkies on Twitter, if you see that on a Wednesday, you need, you're going to know that that means we've got some inside info going up in the chalk bomb email that Wednesday night. Don't you? I think I think that would be good. Yeah, that way I we like could throw that. it out there, and everybody who doesn't have a clue just thinks we're idiots. But then the followers know that we've got something legitimate to share that's going to be good in the chalk bomb. Yeah, I, I agree. But I think it needs to be something um, very creative, sort of unique to golf slash DFS. Not like not something like you know the lion is in the den. Or something like that. <laughs> What's the other one? Like, like the, actually, I just made that up. But you know, like the eagle has landed. The eagle has like landed. Yeah, like yeah, that. yeah. Like I don't want an eagle has landed. Anything like that. It needs to be something else. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. Let's see if our if our YouTube. Fr- I I kind of want to make it fun and 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 um, maybe somewhat tournament specific. Maybe our YouTube followers, our YouTube viewers right now can help come up with a good phrase if we tweet that or we put it on our Instagram stories. That means we've got some some secret intel hitting late to the chalk bomb email. And if they can't come up with something, then we'll, we'll figure it out by the end of the show. Um, but I, I just think we need to I think we need to do that. And we're not going to get it every week. Listen, we're just not going to get it every week. But a lot of weeks we do. We've got it the last few, and it's been valuable stuff. If you're not already subscribed to the chalk bomb, you need to go to tourjunkies.com, scroll to the bottom right of any page, and you can put in your email address right there where it says chalk bomb. That's you. A lot of people saying they haven't been getting the emails, but we're showing that they're, they've been delivered. You need to make sure that uh, it's not in your promotions folder if you have a Gmail account or a spam folder or a junk folder or whatever. And make sure info at tourjunkies.com, which is our email address, is a saved contact that you uh, you give permission to receive that. That helps you make sure that you get the Chalk Bomb email on Wednesday nights. Uh, so I, I wanted to think through that. We, we need a phrase, so let's, let's work on that. Um, but, you know, in terms of, of El Chameleon... Uh, golf golf club, yeah. I'm looking at guys who hit it straight, who hit it down the middle off the tee. Uh, you know, know where their know where their ball's going off the tee. Accurate. Um, definitely agree with you on the opportunities gained stat, strokes gained approach. Guys dialed in with their irons. Um, other I mean, than if that, you really look at the course. Like if you kind of like, I, I went through looked at a quick little video of the course. I mean, again, it's not like you know these these forests and mangrove forests and everything that, that can kill you off the tee are right there tied up on the fairways because yeah. there's definitely some room. But you still can't spray it all over the place uh, because you're going to get in some crap and you're going to be in some trouble. So that that's really the key. So I, I think you look at driving accuracy, but it's not necessarily like I'm only looking at accurate guys and that kind of stuff. So Yeah, I'm not only looking at it. I mean, obviously, though, if you're, in, if you're you know, even if it doesn't kill you, if you're in the fairway, these guys control their ball flight so well um, and can control spin and distance control and all that's important. You know, we talked, I, I hit a little bit on, you know, being able to check the weather on Wednesday night. This place is obviously on the coast. It can get kind of breezy, a little windy. If it does, you're really going to want guys in the fairway because they can they can much easier control the ball, the distance, the ball flight, trajectory, things like that when it's in the yeah, fairway exactly. as opposed to the rough. So. Well, again, and with these big greens out here, you want to give yourself, you know, a good look into the green. You don't want to be, you know, off, you know, out of position off the tee. So that's another reason to to be looking at, you know, guys that just, you know, keep it between the lines. Keep it between the mustard and the mayo. You know what I mean? Oh uh, yeah. All right, let's uh, let's do this, Pat. Let's get to this top tier, nine thousand dollars and above on DraftKings. We're going to give you three tournament plays we like, or GPP plays, a cash lock, and a fade, as well as any betting. To, uh, any 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 guys here that are going to make the possibly make the betting ticket. Uh, now, one person who's not here is Ricky Fowler, who was supposed to be here, but apparently withdrew due to an infection he received on his honeymoon. Not a good sign when you're getting an infection on your honeymoon. <laughs> I mean, I'm a little concerned about. If that. there's anyone I would take an infection from, it may be uh, Ricky. It may be hurt. Well, anyway, it's oh, it's. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know that I would be disclosing if I'm Ricky that that's like. Can you make up anything else? Like, 
call Jason Day. He's your boy. Be like, hey, Jason, you're really good at making up lame excuses for withdrawing from a tournament. What should I tell people? <laughs> and he's going to be like, oh, tell them you have typhoid and you're, you're, you know, I don't know. Like, well, he's, Day's been all over the world. I don't, where was he honeymooning, by the way? Do you, do you, do you remember? I, 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 I don't. Say, I'm sure Day has been there and he could say, oh, well, oh, so yeah. and so disease is common to that area, so you just go with that. Yeah. I mean, there's plenty of people on tour you can call. Uh, but I mean, like an infect, a honeymoon infection. Just you just put an idea in people's heads that just aren't. <laughs> like, this is a terrible idea. Okay, of all the fr- of all the best friends that Ricky Fowler has on tour, like think of the dozens of guys that he is apparently best friends with and stands on the you know on the 18th <laughs> behind the 18th green when they win. Right, if you had to pick three to help Ricky through the clap, right? Cuz they say when you when you get the clap, you got to have you got to have a, a you got to have a buddy on each on each arm holding your arms up against the wall, right? And you got to have a clapper, right, to help you. Who who would you say his three were and what positions would they be? Well, basically we just want to know which one would be the clapper. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Wait, what? I mean do you not know about this? About like if you get the clap, if you get gonorrhea, which they call the clap. I, I don't know about this. I have to. I have you to don't. Say, I just don't know. Yeah. So they say if you get gonorrhea and and it swells up and gets all nasty, you have to have three friends: one to hold your arm up against the wall here, one to hold it, your other arm up against the wall, and you stand up against the wall, drop your trousers, and they another friend claps your. Okay, so I, I would say like. <laughs> JT's probably over there. He's holding one arm. Okay. Um, I, I feel like I feel like Bubba's the clapper, like from the old from the old like golf boys days. Oh, I feel like Bubba. I didn't even I think like about Bubba. him. Yeah, yeah. Bubba's the clapper. Bubba would do that. I feel like, like he would do that. He's a him, he's a you know? he's a Christian. You know, he he's probably like, yeah, man. I'll I'll sacrifice for my brother and, and do this. I'm gonna wear gloves, but I'll I'll do it, man. Yeah, I'm just thinking of the go- of the uh, you know the the spring break boys. I mean, you got to throw in golf boys in there too. I mean, that that was a different phase for Ricky. Yeah. But if he's got the if he's got this disease or this whatever, then he then he he probably needs to bring in some old older friends because yeah. like it's all hands on all hands on deck. It's yeah, Bubba deal. Bubba's a long Bubba's been a long time friend. You know, like. They've yeah. they've been through it thick and thin. You know the, the spring break thing's probably so superficial. You know, yeah. Um, well, that's good. All right, I'm glad we worked that out. That was okay. That's that terrible. Was that was a good start. Yeah. <laughs> All right, in the night can above my tournament plays. Um, I'm gonna play the kid that I've said to fade for the last I don't can't tell you how many times, and it's worked out every time. But I feel like now is the time. I'm gonna jump on Victor Hovland at 11-2 on DraftKings. I, he's been super. He's been way overpriced in every tournament because everybody. I mean, I, I get it. Hovland is special. He really is. But I said to fade him at the CJ Cup where he finished thirty first. I said to fade him again at the Zozo where he finished forty first. But for some reason today, I, I cannot avoid. Well, I mean, the reasons I can't avoid him are because the kid's ball striking is next freaking level. Like unbelievable ball striking. Extremely accurate player. He's the perfect combo of long and accurate. Um, I just I, I feel like if I fade Victor three times in a row at this high price, it's going to come back to bite me. So I'm going to play Victor Hovland at 11-2. Um, I'm also going to my t- but my two favorites in this range that I feel the best about are Joaquin Neiman, who's coming off a T12 at the CJ Cup, a 33rd at the Zozo. Obviously, we saw him win his first event. Uh, a few weeks back, he did play here last year. Didn't play too well, honestly. But um, you know, and he and he doesn't. He's not super accurate, but great ball striker, solid form. The iron play has been impeccable. Uh, checks the box and strokes gained approach and opportunities gained over the last twelve rounds. Uh, he's been there since yesterday, like Sunday. I saw on his Instagram he was he was playing and warming up and uh, you know taking it taking it real serious, which I like. I mean. It, yeah. In my research today, I'm, I'm like thinking about some of the guys we saw at the Kisner Foundation event just a couple nights ago, and I'm like, if I if I had to play golf this week, I don't know that I would. I don't know that I could. Um, so I don't. I don't know. Like I, I feel like Neiman's 
he's there prepping. You know, he's there early. He's prepping. Mm-hmm. I, I kind of like that. Um, but my favorite play in this range, who I'm going to play in tournaments and I'm going to play in cash, and I'm, he's going to start off my betting card at 30 to one, is Russell Knox, um, who just checks every single box, fairways, short term and long term, uh, tremendous ball striking lately. Um, he finished 11th at the Bermuda just a couple weeks ago. Before that, 28th at the Houston Open. Uh, his record here, impeccable. Didn't play last year, but before that, a ninth, a third, a second, and a 37th. This course is just built for Russell Knox. Now, I do think he's going to be kind of chalk Knox is, is what we're going to get this week. And, and maybe maybe that's worth fading at 9,300. I, I don't think it's terrible. I, I mean, the value that you get for Russell Knox compared to a lot of the players above him is pretty pretty good, if you ask me. So um, I love Russell Knox. He'll start off the ticket at 30-1. to 1. Cash lock as well. My fade is going to be a guy we've already talked about, and that's Jason Day. Um, I, you know, we've not seen Jason Day in – maybe recently he's been a little better, but not super accurate off the tee. Um, he's never played this event, uh, at least not, not, in, recent, in, not, not in recent years. Um, and if I'm playing Victor Hovland, I'm not really interested in squeezing in anybody over 10K uh, there above him. So I think Day is an easy fade for me. I mean, I'd rather even go up and play Kuchar instead of Day right now. So um, I'll take my chances on fading Jason Day. Okay. All right. Well, we have a little bit of agreement here uh, and a slight disagreement. Um, but I'm going to start with the two agreements. I am totally with, with you on Russell Knox. He was one of the tournament plays that I written, wrote down for all the reasons that you said, so I don't have to really expound upon that at all. And as far as Neiman is concerned, he was my cash play this week. I think you can definitely play him in tournaments, but as you said, I mean, the guy's just, you know, across the board, every stat category, this is a great course fit for him, so I do like some Neiman. Uh, Another GPP play that I like, and you know, he really hasn't done all that great lately when you look at the last two, uh, you know, really WGC-type event, no-cut events, and that's Tony Finau. He was T53 at the HSBC. He was T59 at the Zozo. And that's near the bottom because these are, what, 70-man fields. But I think you're going to get a little bit of lower ownership on him this week. And I just feel like – and you look at – I mean, he's played well here in the past. Um, You know, he was T16 last year. He did miss a cut in 17 but was top 10 in 2015. Uh, You you look at the stats. I mean, he definitely checks the box across the board. He's second in the field in ball striking. He's third in strokes gain approach, checks the box in opportunities gained, greens and regulation. Great scrambler. He's top 10 in DraftKings scoring. So I really like Tony Finau this week, and I'm hoping that I get a little bit of an ownership just dip because of how he's done recently in those WGC events. And you know what? Well, before I get to my fade, I I forgot I have one more GPP play, and that's Abraham Answer at 9,200. Yeah, going with him this week. Look, he's got good history here. He was T4 last week at the HSBC. Checks the box in ball striking and scrambling. I think answer is a good play. Uh, another guy, and he might go a little bit lower on this week. We'll see. Um, so I, I like some answer. My fade is actually going to be everyone except Finau in the 10K range. Everyone. Fade them all. I'm okay. fading Kuchar. I'm fading Jason Day. I'm fading Victor Hovland. And I'm fading Billy Horschel. All of them except Tony Finau. They're all fades for me. So there you go. That's my hot take in the over 10 K range. Look, Kuchar I mean, I, I don't, yeah, Kuchar I don't a lot of reasons. Cause I think he, like you said earlier, I don't know if he wants to be here. I think this is going to be an uncomfortable event for him. And I definitely not want to pay 11 four totally with you on what you said for Jason day, Victor Hovland. Look, he's, he's hard to fade. I mean, God, you look at the stats and everything. He's just like, he's like looking at this beautiful model, you know, amongst like a lot of average people, you know, a lot of average girls, you know, and like she's, he is literally the hot girl in the bar that she, that's going to win the night somehow. But I just feel like it's just I don't want to pay that 11-2 price for him. And the only one that I feel like I'm really comfortable putting in lineup is Tony Fino at 10-6. So there you go. Hmm. I mean, I don't hate the play of, you know, find find a guy in the 10K range and let that be your horse and, and don't, don't play any other. I mean, that's probably what I would do with Victor Hovland. 
Uh, I'm also going to start a lot of lineups without anybody in the 10K range. I, I think the Neiman-Knox combo, although, I, I again, I can see that being quite chalky. So, um, But th there's plenty of other guys down here you can kind of differentiate your lineups and tournaments and stuff like that. But, you know, e everybody's, been, everybody's been used to kind of freewheeling it these last few events because there's been no cut. And now you got to remember that you, you're going to have a cut, and, and the new cut rules of 65 and ties are in effect. And so just getting six of six through is important, no matter what the ownership is. You know, even if you have a couple super chalk guys, getting six of six, of six through is numero uno. So I, I don't hate the move there. Um, I don't. I don't hate it. All right, eight um, K and above range, Pat. For me, this was a this was a tough one. I think there's a there's a few guys in here that you know I'm I'm digging. Um, I'm in terms of GPP leverage, I think I can get a little bit of leverage from Denny McCarthy at 8,400. I think people are not going to want to play Denny at that price tag. Um, now he did just come off a 15th place finish at the Bermuda, and before that, uh, two back-to-back T9s at the Houston and the Shriners. Uh, not a super amazing history here, with but he's played twice, made the cut both times. But this place is built for Denny McCarthy. It's built for his game. Uh, an accurate player that that's not going to overwhelm a course with distance, but incredible short game. Um, and if he gets hot with the putter, watch out. So I, I'm going to roll with Denny McCarthy. I'm also going to roll with JT Poston, our boy JT, uh, at 50 to one. Also, he will he could possibly find his way on the betting card, um, but he checks the box and obviously driving accuracy, short games, incredible. 24th at the WGC, 27th at the Zozo. You know, it's a pretty tough, you know, strong field events. He's played this event three times here at Mayakoba, and he's gained 16 strokes in those three tournaments with a T21, T14, and a T35. So I like JT coming off of, uh, you know, a couple weeks getting it dialed in, and now he's coming to a weaker field event uh, that's really built for his game. So I like him. And then my cash play is a guy that just checks every single possible box uh, and he will be another chalky play, and that is Emiliano Grillo at 8,900. Uh, but I think he's a cash lock for sure. Um, you know, three years, in the last three years, he's gained 24 strokes with two top 10s and a T15 for Emiliano Grillo. Um, and he's not playing that 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 bad either. I mean, uh, he's, but he just checks every single box. It's unbelievable. He, he's, he's checking boxes like Victor Hovland checks boxes. So when you're looking at driving accuracy, iron approach play opportunities gain that's what he's doing uh my fade in this range is going to be cam champ um obviously listen i know that cam champ is a bomber and i know that he's going to club down i get that um but you know he's even when he is clubbing down he's not really hitting a lot of fairways he's uh in the last 12 rounds he's 66th in this field in fairways gained um i, I just you know not he's too unpredictable he's played here twice he did have a t10 last year missed the cut the first year i was not willing to pay up for cam champ you play cam champ when his greatest asset his greatest weapon his driver is in hand you don't you don't play him when it when it's removed from his hands um, then he's just he's going to be a mere mortal from his you know from his fairway you know from the fairway in he's just below average or uh, or maybe average at best so cam champ's a fake all right, well, we're going to have some disagreement here, um, but I'll start with the agreement, and that is definitely Grillo. I think he is just far and away. It's a, it's a very just obvious play. He's right there look, staring at you. I just don't see how you avoid him, so I do love him in cash. Certainly could play him in tournaments as well, um, but I'm totally with you there. Another agreement was JT Poston. I mean, I hate to keep bringing him up because, you know, obviously we have a great relationship with his caddy and everything, but his caddy has told us we put it out there um, – I guess a couple weeks ago in the in the chalk bomb or what I don't know where we put it, but as Caddy's saying, he's playing fantastic right now. He's checking all the boxes. This is a great course fit for JT, so I do like him. I like that price at 8,200. So I'm totally with you on JT Poston. Now here's where the disagreement is. I actually have Cam Champ. No, you it's don't. One of my tournament plays, and it's what? I kept trying to avoid him, but you know what? He's eighth in this field in ball striking. Which is, I think, key for this this week. I think ball striking is key. He's eighth in this field. Definitely is a scorer. He's 20th in the field in opportunities gained. I don't necessarily think, I mentioned before, that yes, you do got to hit fairways. And you can't spray it off the tee. And you got to be accurate, which he's not. 
But I don't think I still think he can take advantage of his length here. I do on a seven thousand yard course. He's finished top ten here before, like you said last year. He's playing better this year than he had, you know, did really all of you all of last year. I mean, when I say this year, this fall with a win. Uh, so I like Cam Champ, and I and, and I don't know where his ownership's going to be. Like if he's high owned, it'll change my tune a little bit. If we get to Wednesday and he's looking in at, at like a you know. 15 to 20 percent owned somewhere in there. I just don't think I want to pet play him, but I don't think that's where he's going to be. So I actually do like some Cam Champ this week in this tournament, in this field. He's super talented. We've seen it over and over again. So I, I, I will play him this week. So I was surprised. I kind of, I, I, I wasn't sure that was going to be one of your fades. I had a feeling, um, but yeah, I'm going to play him this week. My fade is going to be Keegan Bradley. Just, just not going to play him. Pisses me off all the time. But also, he's not checking any boxes. He's 91st in the field in ball striking. He's 113th in approach, 104th in opportunities gained. He really doesn't just, just doesn't check any box whatsoever for me. Um, so I think Keegan is, is just, he's off he's off the list for me this week. Can't, can't play any Keegan. And look, he does have a de- decent history here. He hasn't played in two years. Um, but I don't know. I, I don't know. He's always going to garner some ownership because of, who he is and where he is, price and everything else. I think he's going to be probably a little over on this week, but we'll see. So Keegan will be my fade. So there you go. Hmm. I don't, yeah, I don't like the champ. I don't like the champ play. I, I think I, I do want to take a second to educate the listener. You know, you say he checks the box and strokes gain ball striking. Some people may be wondering, what's the difference in ball striking and strokes gain approach or strokes or opportunities gained or – Whatever, and I think that's a good thing to bring up. Strokes gained ball striking is co- combining strokes gained off the tee and strokes mm-hmm. gained approach. Strokes gained approach, correct. So it's basically strokes gained tee to green, but tee to green includes around the green. So you're scrambling, you're within 30 yards or whatever. So it just takes that out. Um, and 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 I think one of the, I mean, I do agree. Like it's the same. It's the same concept as the ball striking stat on the PGA Tour site. If you look at it, it's total driving. Uh, and then it's also greens and regulation, so it's kind of a little bit different. But that's yeah. that's that's what it is. Same concept, yeah. I, I just think champs that that strokes game ball striking is is tough. I mean, his irons aren't bad, but he's getting a lot of that love because he just bombs the crap out of it. So that 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 you know that takes up his strokes game off the tee ranking pretty good. I, that's why I prefer not to look at strokes game off the tee this week uh, because I think it just it weighs very heavily the bombers. So. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna. We're gonna have a big disagreement on champ. Maybe, maybe we could throw in an old, an old fashioned tour junkies David Pat bet. You remember oh, we used to we do should. those. Yeah. Find although, another guy. I'll. I'll although, okay, yeah. maybe we will. But I, we, the problem is never find. It's not finding guys. It's finding what what we're gonna do. Like what the other person is gonna do if they lose. Yeah. That, that's always been the issue. I've though. had to do the more crazy things like. What was the song I had to sing? You had to do um, gangsters. You had to rap gangsters, gangsters paradise. Yeah. I had to wear pleated pants for a day. I did that. That sucked. That was terrible. I got bullied. Did um, you get bullied? Really? I'm sorry, man. Yeah, I got bullied. So bad. If uh, maybe the listeners, if you guys come up with some realistic, like freaking realistic, don't don't. We we I think we asked for this before. It's like crazy stuff, like stuff we can actually pull off. Come up with some some punishments if if me or I'm Pat lose lose a bet. Yeah, like don't don't do weird head. stuff. Like or stand on a corner with nothing but a sign around your I don't know, like just weird stuff. Don't don't do that. Just yeah. doable stuff that we could do. Um, so like like I I will play an entire round of golf in a bad birdie shirt. It's like something like that. <laughs> or no, I'll wear a bad birdie shirt to work. That would actually be a good one. That actually because, would like, be a good pe- one. people would people would in my office, they would be like, What the <laughs> actually that actually so that's a good one. You may have just you may have just sealed your own fate there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. actually not a bad one. I like that. Um, all right, hit me with the seven K range. What you got here? All right, so seven K range. Look, this is an interesting range for me. There's obviously a lot of guys here. Um, I had a hard time with with really my cash play here, um, but I'm going to start with uh, right near the top at seventy nine hundred with HB three. I mean, Hero Varner, I think is just. This is look. I know you don't like the bombers this week, but the guy has played pretty daggum well. Yeah, he here. plays good here. Mid- yeah. Pr- 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 can't even freaking talk. Besides the missed cut a couple years ago, he's got two top ten finishes here. Um, 
you looking at the stats for for all HV3. I mean, he's you know checks the box in ball striking, opportunities gain. He's top 20 in the field. Scrambling, he's top 10 in the field. I keep mentioning scrambling, and one of the reasons I do is because I looked it back at the last like three or four years here this tournament, and every single guy that either won or finished in the top 10 finished high in scrambling. And so I like that for HV3. I like that price at 7,900. Um, so I, I think he is a good play there. Another guy that I like is Bryce Garnett at 7,600. Oh. Let me tell you about let me tell you about old old Bryce Garnett. This guy <laughs> has has absolutely just played lights out. He has gained 33 strokes on the field in this tournament. He's finished fifth, 25th, seventh, and sixth over the last four years here. Uh, so obviously this is a this is a great course fit for him. Uh, so I think Garnett just kind of stands out to me as just a, a good solid tournament play. You look at his last two events; he was 42nd at the Houston Open, but had a top 25 at the Safeway. Um, has made three or four cuts this fall, so I really like some Bryce Garnett at 7600. I don't fun. know why you are laughing so but hard. I'm laughing because of my Bryce Garnett. <laughs> The the fun fact from the Kevin Kisner Foundation event, I'm, so things are coming back to me slowly from from that event, and which tends not, to happen it's today. To happen. Today I'm researching, and uh, I come across Bryce Garnett's name, and it all floods back to me. Bryce was at the event. Hey, let me just tell let me just tell the listeners, Bryce Garnett, just sneaky cool dude, and a and a good dancer. Uh, he's, he's a pretty good dancer. If I remember correctly, um, we had a great time. Um, he's got some moves. He's not afraid to get out there and, and do his thing. Uh, but yeah, as I was, as I, I was literally going through the list, and I get, I get to Bryce's name, and just flood of memories come back on Saturday. Mm-hmm. We had a good, we had a good time talking to Bryce. He's uh, he's a pretty fun dude. He 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 knew how to he knew how to let it loose. It was a good time. Uh, I'm I'm definitely a bigger fan of his now that I've now that I've met him than I was before. But it just it makes me laugh because it just flood it just flooded back to me when I saw his name on Fantasy National. <laughs> oh goodness! <clears throat> All right, another one I'm going to go with. I'm not going with the Doc Doc Redman at 7100. I like him as well. You look at this fall; he's made five of six cuts. Um, so for a guy at 7100, that's very good. He was 13th at the Houston Open. He was top 25 at the Greenbrier. Uh, you, you look at the stats for him. Um, I mean, really, he's he's fantastic. I mean, fourth in ball striking, checks the box and opportunities gained, greens in regulation. He's actually fourth in the field. If you want to throw in driving accuracy, which you, you know, he's fourth in the field in driving accuracy. He's top 20 in DraftKings scoring. This is over the last 24 rounds. So I do like some Doc Redman at 7,100. I think he's a, a good, probably, probably low-owned GPP play. As far as fades in this range, I'm going to continue to fade Zach Johnson until he shows me something. I, I know he did have, I think, a top 20 finish a few weeks ago or whatever, but I, and he's a big name in this range that everybody will probably gravitate towards. And he does check a few boxes, but I'm still going to fade some Zach. He's just not showing me anything, and I just, I'm not ready to play him. Also, Kevin Streelman. I think Kevin Streelman's going to be one of the higher-owned guys in this 7K range. And I just, hmm. I just... I'm going to fade him for that reason. You look at the stats. By the way, everybody thinks he's an accurate guy. He's 41st in the field in driving accuracy. He's 90th in strokes gained around the green. He's 80th in DraftKings scoring, 70th in opportunities gained. The best stat, when I look across the board at what I put put in, in my little model here, was 43rd in ball striking. And, and look, he's he's got, I guess you, you could say he's got a decent history here. Um, with a top four a couple years ago, a T20, missed the cut last year. He's had he's just so inconsistent lately, I think, and I feel like he's going to be higher owned. So I'm going to fade some Kevin Strillman as well. Cash play, only because you love him now. He's your, your new best friend. I'm just going to go with Bryce Garnett. Yeah. Because I, could, I couldn't come, come up with a cash play, so that's what it's going to be. Bryce Garnett, David's new best dance buddy. Uh, hey, Marcus had a good idea for uh, for a bet. If if I lose a bet, I have to use a poker chip ball marker for a round and document it. If you lose a bet, 
you have to golf in joggers or high top shoes. What do you think about okay. that? I mean, it's, it's not. What size shoe do you I'd wear? Rather, I'd rather do that. Than, look, no, no hating on Bad Birdie. We love the Bad Birdie guys. I love them. But I would, I would, I need, I would definitely rather do that than go to work in a Bad Birdie shirt, just because <laughs> of all the stuff that I, I know. Like people know me and what I normally wear. It would just, it would be a day of lots of answering questions. <laughs> what size shoe do you wear? Ten and a half. Oh yeah. Well, we could, you could, you can make my, my high tops work. Um, all right. I'm pretty torn in the seven K range. Like I've got some guys in the top of the seven K that I could give, but I've also got a few guys in the bottom that I could give. And I feel like the listeners would find more value in the, in the bottom dwellers. So I'm going to go to the bottom, um, of this range and, and give, give my plays there. Uh, I'm going to go with Ryan armor. You know, I mean, talk about checking the box. Look at him too. Yep. He is third in, uh, fairways gained over the last 12 rounds. Um, 12th in strokes gained approach over the last 12 and 7th in opportunities gained over the last 12. Um, T23 at the Houston Open. He finished, uh, what did he do? He finished 8th at, at Bermuda. Uh, I think Ryan Armour is a very strong play at only $7,200. He's made his last two cuts here. Best finish at T21, um, but he's, you know, I think he's a steal at 72 hunch. And then uh, I'm going to go with Zinjun Zhang. Our boy Zinju, mm-hmm. who just continues to play some really solid golf. He played here two years ago, finished 20th. Uh, he's had a tremendous fall swing already. He's, in his last four events, he's gained 26 strokes on the field, has Zinju. He's checking the box in accuracy. The irons are incredible. He's fifth in opportunities gained. Um, so I, I, I like Zinju a good bit. And then uh, I'm going to go with Cameron Tringali. I've been rolling with him for a you know large portion of this uh, fall swing and uh, he's 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 been paying off uh, Tringali finished 13th at the Houston Open 44th at the Safeway um, you know top 25 here the last time he played but iron irons have been spectacular uh, he's been a little more accurate lately than he has over the long term but uh, I really like those three down there at the bottom so uh, I'm so Tringali and Zhang are eighty to one, which is interesting to me on my bookie, and Ryan Armour ninety to one on my bookie, and and actually I feel so good about Ryan Armour, I would play him in cash at seventy two hundred dollars. He is as low as I would go in cash, but I think you can, if you plug him in a lineup, you can have a very solid you know six of six through the cut cash lineup if you're playing DFS. I, th- I think that's a good bet. Um, and I love the betting numbers there for all three of those guys. Again, Ryan Armour ninety to one, and Zhang and Tringali at eighty to one. By the way, if you've not already gone over to my bookie, you need to take advantage. This is the last couple weeks where, if you use promo code Tour Junkies, you get a one hundred percent deposit bonus on any deposit above fifty dollars, up to a thousand dollars. So if you want to bet online, follow along with our bets. We're up big time on the season right now. Uh, with the chalk bomb emails uh, that, that go out, and my betting card is up there. Uh, come bet with us on golf, NFL, NBA, anything you can think about. You can bet on mybookie.ag. Use promo code Tour Junkies when you sign up, and you get that deposit bonus. Plus, they take extra special, good, tender, loving care of all of our TJ listeners. About 700 of you now have done this over the last almost three years. We've been using my bookie, and uh, they take good care of our people. If you ever have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, you can always email us, and they always take good care of our folks. We have direct access to some people at MyBookie. So check it out, MyBookie.ag, promo code Tour Junkies. And my two fades in this range are going to be Carlos Ortiz and Wyndham Clark. Oh, both, wow. Both have sucked here in a few attempts, and both greatest assets would be length and their drivers. So... I'm uh, I'm I'm taking those out. Um, I'm take, I'm not not interested in either one of those. Wyndham Clark, if he yeah, he literally checks absolutely zero boxes. So there you go. Um, yeah. All right. Six K range. Who you got in the six K? Anybody you're playing? Yeah, we got a couple actually. Uh, so I'm gonna start at sixty nine hundred. I'm liking some Scott Harrington. 
I think he's a he's a, a good kind of sneaky play this week. Uh, you look at his recent form. He was second at the Houston Open, T23 at the Safeway. Um, you look at stats, he's checking the boxes there. I mean, he, literally across the board. I mean, he is 11th in ball striking, 22nd in strokes gain approach. He's 5th in greens and regulation, 16th in DraftKings scoring. This is over, like I said, over the last 24 rounds. Scott Harrington's been, he's been up there. I mean, 2nd in his last event. Hell yeah. I'll take he's, him at 6,900. Yeah, he's a stud, He's man. been extremely solid, so I like that at 6,900. Another guy that I think is going to be a good play is our boy, Johnny Vegas. I just, I, I just, I got to play him. Look, you know, 6,800, checking the box and ball striking. Also, opportunities gained. He's third in the field in opportunities gained. Fourth in greens and regulation. Top 15 in DraftKings scoring. Uh, you know, the, the, the history here has, for him has been, um, I, I'd say, a little mixed. I can't find him now. Well, T38, T61, T10, yeah. miscut, T56. Yeah. So, anyway, I don't know why I couldn't. I was, like, blind there for a second, but... Anyway, I do like Johnny Vegas. He was 16th in his last event at the CJ Cup. I, I just think he's, look. Always, I mean, you look at Johnny Vegas under 7K. He, he's hard to avoid. I, w- I will say his ownership may be a little bit high. We'll see where it, where it goes there. But uh, So, yeah, those are the two guys there. Also, I'm going to give you a bonus play. Very cheap. A guy that had a hot start coming off of the Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, a graduate there that you know started off really well in the fall swing, but then has kind of fallen off a little bit. But I do like him this week, and that is Robbie Shelton at 6,300. If you want a really cheap guy there, I think you're, he's going to have an, He's had an ownership dip, he's had a price dip, but you look at it. I mean, this is this is a good event for him as far as the stats are concerned. Um, I mean, Robbie is. Uh, Anyway, Robbie's a good ball striker. What, what are you doing, field, ball striking, 22nd in opportunities gained. Set, seventh, by the way, in fairways gained. So an accurate off the, guy off the tee. So I think Robbie Shelton at 6,300 is another guy that's just sort of a cheap, solid play. If you're just looking – if you're in that – and I was not saying play him in every lineup, but I like Robbie Shelton this week for sort of that flyer tournament play. Robbie Shelton will always have a special place in my heart after that 150 to one first round leader bet at the Greenbrier, um, but I don't think he's going to be great here. I hate to tell you, I don't think he's in great form. He's you're, you're well, he's definitely, not, but you are definitely not, leaning but, towards those bombers for sure. That this that we have very different approaches to this to this event, which is interesting. Um, well, I've got a few guys in here I like, including two that I'm a I'm big I'm a big proponent of in tournament lineups. Uh, but before I do that, Pat, I we we talked about this a couple times with our listeners. Your experience with Warby Parker, and that is not a girl that you took out on a date, but that is uh, your that's your eyeglass. That's where we go to get our eyeglasses now. And you got to order uh, because of their free home try on program. You got five pair of glasses. You tried them on for a few days, and and then what what you have to do? Yeah, so you 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 order them off their website. It's very easy to do. They send you five. You try them on. You pick one that you like, they send it to you. I mean, it's a fantastic experience. And look, it's not just eyeglasses that you you know that make you see better. You can actually you, you know they have shades, they have they have sunglasses, that kind of stuff. Shades. So, yeah, shades. Yeah. <laughs> future so yeah. future so bright, you gotta wear shades. Ooh. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, everything it's, ships it's a free. Great experience. Yeah. All it's ships. I mean, like qu- as quick as you literally go on their website and choose your glasses. They're there within a couple of days. It's a fantastic experience, and it's, I mean, it's very stylish. And you know me, I'm a very, very stylish, stylish guy. So I mean, yeah. it's it's an, it's a great experience. I love some Warby Parker. Check them out. Yeah, so they ship free. It includes a prepaid return shipping label. You can go to WarbyParker.com/tourjunkies and order the free home try on. And if you need help, you can take a quiz. You answer a few questions. They'll suggest some great looking glasses. You can get them personalized to fit your face and your style. You can take the quiz and find that perfect pair. Glasses start at $95. That includes prescription lenses. And all your lenses include anti-glare and anti-scratch coatings. And you can get blue light filtering lenses now, also available, which is which is pretty sweet. 
And if you have an iPhone 10 or, or newer, you can download Warby Parker's app where you can use the brand new virtual try-on system. And it allows you to put the glasses on your face using technology. It's pretty cool. You can see the realistic color, the texture, size of every style using just your phone. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple. We're, we're fans of the Warby Parker folks. It's, uh, it's good. And, and for every pair of glasses that you buy, they distribute a pair of glasses to someone who needs them. Uh, sunglasses also start at $95. That includes polarized lenses. Uh, also, you can get those with prescriptions starting at around $175 uh, and get some premium UV protection, all that good stuff. So warbyparker.com slash tourjunkies is the website. warbyparker.com slash tourjunkies. Thank you to Warby Parker for supporting us. And hey, you support us by supporting Warby Parker if you need new glasses or prescription sunglasses. That would be great. Um all right, Pat, my final picks here in the 6K range, my favorite pick in this range is our boy, and I'm surprised you didn't say him at $6,800, Vaughn Taylor. Um, tenth in fairways. I'm trying, trying to offer up some different names here. Tenth in fairways gained over the last 12 rounds. Uh, always been an accurate driver of the golf ball. Twentieth in opportunities gained over the last 12 rounds. Uh, you know, playing, uh, play, playing okay, you know, not, not great. He's, he's hanging in there, but he's playing. A, this course is just way better built for him. Um, he does he has gotten progressively better at this golf course over the last three years. A 60th, a 41st, and then a 26th last year, his progressive results here. Uh, so I think that's interesting for old Von Taylor. And also at 6,800, Fabian Gomez. I'm a big fan of old Selena's, mm. Selena's daddy, Fabian Gomez, baby. Um, Back in the fold. Gomez finished seventh at the Bermuda, uh, another place that was a, a little better built for him. He is an extremely accurate driver of the golf ball. Irons have been playing, uh, you know, doing pretty well. Also, um, so then I'm going to drop down to 6,700. I'm going to look at a little David Hearn, another little accurate son of a gun is David Hearn. Um, nothing real flashy about him. He's just boring as ever, but he's, he's accurate. And then finally, I'm going to go with Adam Long. I, I, I think it's crazy that a, a recent, you know, in the last year, PGA Tour winner at $6,600, Adam Long, who's been playing very, very well lately. Um, I mean, his recent, I mean, where, where is he? Now I've lost him. All right. See, see, 50, see, see. 51st at the difficult. Zozo, not great. 46th at the CJ Cup, 23rd at the Safeway. Um, but I just, I, I don't know, I, I like Adam Long here. When you look at those stats. I'm a fan. He's, I'm definitely a fan. He's 32nd in fairways gained, 6th in strokes gained approach, and 4th in opportunities gained over the last 12 rounds. So the dude's irons are just absolutely dialed in. Adam Long, 125-1 to 1 on my bookie, along with uh, Fabian Gomez and Von Taylor, all at 125-1 to 1 on my bookie. I would look to all three of those guys as potential outright bets over on mybookie.ag. So there you go. That's the, uh, that's the My Coba, Pat. That's the My Coba. Um, you know, we had a lot of, uh, by the way, what's our code word, our code phrase going to be? We didn't get any, we didn't really get any good suggestions on, on YouTube. We need a code phrase for, you know, for us to tweet or put on Instagram. Hey, we have inside caddy information coming in the chalk bomb. Heads up. Be sure to open it. Subscribe if you haven't already. We need a code phrase for that that doesn't say we have inside information. So let, let's let's it continue could be something to like Gol Golby found the golden nut. <laughs> okay, <laughs> we'll throw that one out there. Um, yeah, uh, I think it's I think something like L two can's sister is at our house. Okay. You know what I mean? Kind of tournament specific. Yeah. Yeah. yeah anyway, we'll just we'll keep kicking that around. Um, a lot happened in in the world of golf, Pat, over the last week uh, that we've that we've been off. Um, let's see. Uh, well, Terrell Hatton won on the European Tour in a massive playoff with a chip in. You know, he's been playing extremely well. You like him, yeah? Mm -hmm. I've been all over Hatton lately, and I, I'm happy for him. Yeah, I did not. I, I played one lineup last week, a single entry, uh, and then did not have. Uh, had and I did have a uh, Schwabby Schwab Schwab Schwabbers, yeah, yeah, but that was it. Um, and then you had Eddie Pepperell who ran out of golf balls and just DQ'd himself. 
Um, that I love that guy. Let me tell you something. I'm a freaking I, I, huge fan of that guy. Big fan of that guy, but I, I'd be interested to know. I think that happens more so than you think. Like I, I can remember growing up um, playing tournaments with, you know, or literally, actually, I say playing tournaments. I used to caddy for a good friend of mine who played <laughs> a lot of uh, big events like U.S. Amateurs, that kind of stuff. That happened a decent amount where people actually got DQ'd because they lost, they had, they ran out of balls. Like it's, it's, it's not something that's unheard of, which I think is funny, but anyway, it was a good story. Yeah, I, I love it. He basically said, if I run out of that many golf balls, then I, I'm, I don't deserve to be there anyway. And he just walked off the course. He didn't even borrow a ball, which you can borrow a ball and get a penalty stroke. But See, I, just I didn't love. even know you could borrow a ball. Yeah. I, I love Eddie Pepper. Uh, Ho Sung Choi. Everybody knows Ho Sung, the dancing uh, idiot that likes to just move all over the golf course. Uh, he won in Japan, so good for good for Ho Sung, jacking up greens in Japan as he dances around like a fool. Not a big fan of that crap. Um, and of course, we're going to get to this in a little bit, but uh, the President's Cup picks. We'll, we'll get to that. Uh, that happened. Uh, but the Kisner Foundation event again had a great time there. Uh, got to meet and hang out with Sepp Straka. Love Sep. He'll be on the podcast soon. Great dude. Brendan Todd. Brendan Todd. Way cooler than Fantastic. I thought. Fantastic. <laughs> I kind of thought guy. he was a nerd. He was super no cool. No way. Not at all. No. And yeah. Um, who else? Hendrick Norlander. Um, Scott Brown, Scott, obviously. Scott Brown. Yeah. Uh, Bryce Garnett. All all the good Georgia Georgia boys and the guys that run with Kisner and, and John Tillery. So much fun. Um, we had, a, we had a great time. That was a good time. Um, hey, man, next week, huge week for us. Huge week. If you guys haven't already heard, we have PGA Tour media credentials for the RSM Classic in Sea Island next week. It's a f- awesome event, full field event, um, and we're going to be excited. We're going to be out there Tuesday and Wednesday ahead of time getting you as much information as possible uh, about the golf course, about players, and we're also just going to try not to get in trouble. This is our very first time having PGA Tour credentials. We've had web.com credentials, but it's our first time getting PGA Tour credentials. We're just going to try not to get kicked out or make buffoons of ourselves. Uh, but we're really excited. If you guys have questions that you would love for us to ask, maybe in the press conference room or things you'd like to know, please tweet us, Instagram, email, whatever. Let us know. We'll do our best. Um, we do know that we're not allowed to video players like we can't video interview players we can interview yeah. players talk to players and then relay that information back to the, the the viewers in a video but we can't put them on screen on camera so i just had a thought here because of the fact that the days that we're going to be there are tuesday and wednesday correct mm-hmm. right yeah pretty much all day tuesday and wednesday um is that going to put a little snag in the chalk bomb like is the chalk bomb basically going to be our coverage of yes. the tournament so we might have it's to. Good looking like, out. Yeah, we're gonna. That, there might be a little change to the chalk bomb. There may, there may not be an email or just pay can, attention to. I us. cannot believe you had the forethought to think about that. That is unbelievable. Yeah, and you don't even do hardly shit in the chalk bomb. Okay, well, I know. Whoa, whoa, whoa! whoa. <laughs> well, Everybody pontificate loves. with Pat. There's pontificate there. with Pat is is absolutely a home run. It says Siskel and Ebert, two thumbs up, or whoever it is now. Um, no, I'm just kidding. That was a low. That was a low blow, and for that, I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, but I am very shocked you had the forethought to think about that. But yes, the 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 chalk bomb will light will not happen next week. It will not happen. Just, just think of all the extra content you're gonna you yeah. get by the fact that we're at the tournament is the chalk bomb in itself. So yeah, there you go. yeah. Uh, but it's gonna that's gonna be exciting. I'm really pumped for that. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, all right, Pat. Anything else before our final segment of the night? No. That's all I got, really. All right. Tonight's segment is a repeat. We've had this before. Not this question, but we've had this segment before. It's a new segment. Started this fall. And it's the putter throw. (laughs) Where we get pissed off about something. And we go off about that something. And tonight, we're going to go off about the President's Cup selection. And yet another match play team event where our boy and yes we are not impartial Kevin Kisner gets bumped again and 
I just, I'm, it is the President's Cup, so I don't care that much, but it's just the principle at this point. Like, I, I really don't care about the President's Cup. I, I Actually, I could not care much less than I do right now about the President's Cup. But it's the principle of the Kevin Kisner bump that I don't understand. Thoughts? Thoughts, Patrick? I got a lot of thoughts here. And first off, my first thought is this. Um, we threw out a few tweets last week about the um, selections and everything. And got a little backlash and whatever else. And people thought, oh, God, I can't believe your life is so bad that you care about the president's cut selections. Look, I don't really care all that much. I really don't. It's not like the Ryder Cup for me. Um, do I want the U.S. team to win? Of course I do. Do I want us yeah. to put the best team out there? Of course yeah. I do. But there's really just not a whole lot to talk about right now, especially on a week off. Yeah. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw out a tweet. If I want to, and it's really just gonna be stir the pot, stir the pot a little bit. But here's the deal: I think a lot of people, when when it comes to team events, they get wrapped up in different things and whatever else, and 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 names and all that kind of stuff, and you know who who's gonna get picked and. You know, it's just it's it. There is a little bit of a popularity contest when it comes. It's just like college football, really, to be honest. Uh, when it comes to picking teams and things like that, um, but I think there's a there is a big difference when it comes to team play event. But I I recognize that stats matter. I, I recognize that, and you know what? It mattered at the Ryder Cup in Paris. We had a lot of guys on our team that couldn't hit fairways. That you know that that, that course was just a terrible fit for. Which was one reason oh, was awful. that that Kiz got snubbed because it would have been a perfect course for him. But then another thing is when you're lining up and you're playing a guy either one on one in a match play event or you've got a partner or whatever else, stats don't always come into play. It's totally different. It doesn't matter what stats are. There's a lot of things that go into it. It's a it's a it's just a whole different atmosphere. And so I think that you can't just sit there and look at stats and be the the nerdy guy that says, well, well, this guy has this stat and this guy has this stat and this guy's whatever. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't matter all that much. I want a bulldog guy that wins matches, and that's what Kiz does. I don't care what the stats look like. I don't even care what necessarily the recent form is. It does not matter. And so I, I just feel like everybody gets too wrapped up in that. It's just a it's a totally different animal. When it comes to a tournament versus a match play team event, and you can't tell me otherwise, you can never. I don't care how smart your Harvard degree is. It just it, you cannot tell me otherwise. And and here's the thing, if you are, I can tell these guys that, 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 that these smart guys that want to come out there and give me all the logic and all that kind of stuff, they never play golf. Never play golf in their entire life. They never sat there, like sweating over a putt for $25 for a beer or whatever where they had to, like, come through. And that's the same thing here. I mean, it's obviously, it's on a bigger stage. But, look, there's just a competitive difference to these guys in these team events, mm. and that's where I think Kiz gets overlooked. I mean, I think he's – look, he's not he's not a top-10 golfer in the world, and you could also make the argument, and I get it. This is what's going to come back at me. Make it on points. Don't even worry about having to get picked. I understand that. But look, when you're putting together a team, it is not a beauty contest. It is about the guys that can play match play, that can stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with whoever in the world. doesn't matter what their rank is, what their stats are, whatever it is. When it comes down to it, they are trying to win that match. They're not trying to win a tournament. This is not a four-day tournament. They're trying to win that match. They are trying to win those 18 holes. It is a totally different animal. And so that's where I come in when it comes to choosing teams. And that's where I get angry. But for the most part, I really don't. I mean, look, it's not like I'm losing sleep over it. I get it. Um, you know, so. But I don't think I don't think Tigers picks were all that bold. They were basically just straight along the line. You know, Finau, Woodland, he won the U.S. Open himself which I get. I'm fine with him picking himself. So it really, Patrick yeah. Reed has been great in tournaments and whatever. Yep. Else. I mean, in match play. So whatever. I don't know. Well, I mean, just look at the European tour with 
you know, they're, they're some world ranking being so much worse than, than the American teams year after year, and they still beat us because it doesn't have anything to do with freaking world ranking. You know, the match play is just a different, it's a different deal. But what I don't understand is, you know, th that we continue to forget about this. Our boy Lawrence Tynes tweeted this, the winning percentages of the players on the President's Cup team and Kevin Kisner. There is a one person on the President's Cup team right now that has a better winning percentage in match play over their career than Kevin Kisner, and that is Tiger Woods. At 70, he's won 72 percent of his matches or got points in 72 percent of his matches. Kevin Kisner 71. The next closest is Gary Woodland at 65. Then Kuchar at 62. Then no one else in the 60s. So, and, and Kisner has a sample size to look at. He's 14, five and two career win percentage in match play. 14, five and two. He wins the WGC match play this year against tough competitors. It's a WGC event. He was 66-1 to 1 that week to win, by the way. I know because we bet him and we won money on him. So it, he wasn't like a favorite that week either. He wasn't playing all that great. But Kisner is a fool for match play. The guy lives, eats, sleeps, and breathes match play. And he wants to represent his country, probably a lot more so for the Ryder Cup than he does the President's Cup. But, um, you know, either way, he wants to be out there. And I'm sorry, but I can't tell you how many tour pros we've talked to that say the last person you want to play on a Tuesday practice round for money on the PGA Tour is Kevin Kisner and Scott Brown. Because those two playing against somebody, anybody, any day of the week, can be anybody out there on tour. They just do. And he's just a, he's just that kind of competitor one-on-one -on -one when he's looking the guy in the eye every single hole. He, he's just going to do it. And I, I just don't understand. i tell you what makes me more mad is when Tiger basically prepositions Ricky – to to be the next man up if Brooks withdraws because of this whole injury he's got working on. I mean, he basically said Ricky was the last man out, and it was a tough phone call to make. Well, that that pretty much means if Brooks if Brooks falls off, unless Kiz does something extremely convincing, you know, this week or next week, you know, it, it, he's going to pick Ricky, which that really blows my mind relative to how That's Ricky's even, been yeah, doing. It's like like I can't. All right, so I, didn't, I don't know if I told you this or not. I, I may have mentioned it at the kids' event, but I wouldn't remember. Um, <laughs> did I tell you I got into like a little texting debate with Elk, with Steve Elkington about this? No. <laughs> okay, so Elk, so I tweeted my tweet about. I, I saw that. It was, I saw and it. And then You're... he said something about Tiger knows what he's doing, or whatever. I'm like, my tweet had nothing to do with Tiger. I had nothing to do with Tiger knowing what he's doing. Yeah. So then we went on. The, it was back and forth, back and forth. I may have had a few drinks, and he may have too. <laughs> but it's like he his whole premise I is didn't like know this. is like kids is average, kids is average. Win a major, win a major, and then you, then come say that you can. And I'm like sitting there going, first off, how many guys on the international team have won a major? Okay, well, so I well Tony Finau's only victory is the Puerto Rico then, Open. It, exactly. So the last thing he kept trying to get me to bait him, and I said, well, "What about Tony Finau?" What's he winning? And then he starts throwing stats for Tony Fino. I'm like, okay, wait a second. <laughs> Don't tell me Kiz is a, is a non-major winner and can't win and, and is is average player, but then you're going to get start defending Tony Fino? Like, And I love Tony Fino, but you can't do that. You cannot do that. It's, it's, it doesn't matter what Tony Fino has done. Like, okay, so he's he's long and strong. He said something like he's long and strong and whatever else, can hit the ball far. and whatever. I'm like, Come on, that's not an argument. And so, I, God, it was the craziest thing. But well, look, it, 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 you throw all the stats and everything out the window when it comes to team events. The U.S. should remember that, okay? If yeah. you're going to sit there and go with who's the, who's the guys that are – it's you're not trying to win a tournament. You're Dude, trying to win a team event. We were there in Paris when we got our butts kicked, and I have just never seen – a group of guys more ill-fitted to play that golf course, but all their world rankings were ridiculous. But like we yeah, just, yeah. they that golf course was just absolutely not. You could have put, you could have put Kevin Na, Russell Knox, Joel Damon, Kevin Kisner, freaking Bill Haas, uh, K. H. Lee, Wesley Bryant. You could have put those guys on a team, and they they could have beat <laughs> the team we rolled out there. 
on that golf course. Now I, I don't I don't know anything about the this, this the course they're playing. Uh, was a Royal Melbourne? Uh, I know it's an amazing. No, it's, a, it's an amazing course. It's very, um, you know, it's very I think Augusta National like as far as the greens are concerned. Very quick greens, things like that, undulations, that kind of stuff. So yeah, that I think that's what you're getting with, and it's a it's a fantastic course. I don't know if it's a bombers course or not or whatever. I mean, obviously the Golf National for the Ryder Cup last year was not a bombers course, which was. You know, one reason why Kiss should have been amazing. Now, I, I will I will defend Finau there. I mean, he shocked everybody with his play at Le Golf National last year. I mean, he he was phenomenal at Le Golf National. Uh, he was our best our best player, I think. Um, but I just the, the the Ricky thing is what just kills me. I mean, if I, I do think if Kiss if Kiss can top ten, you know, maybe if he could top ten these last two events, I don't know. I think he puts himself still in the running if Brooks drops out. I, I feel like Brooks is going to. I mean, the Ricky that. thing's going with a name, and that's just like yeah. you don't you don't go with just names for a tournament. I mean, and it's, it's not like his is in bad form. Just, like he's not in bad uh-huh. form at all. If you look at his last events, his worst events have been the Zozo, but before that, he had two top tens, both in the playoffs. A top twelve before that in the playoff. His, his playoff run was a t was a t twelve, a t nine, and a nine in the playoffs. And a 27th the week before that at the WGC, WGC, and a 30th before that at the Open Championship. It's like, what? I mean, it, it's not bad. It, it, his form isn't bad. His form is better than freaking Ricky's for sure. Maybe maybe Patrick Reed's for that. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, it, it, I the putter throw here is not the President's Cup because I just I wish I cared more. And I, I put this out on Twitter to see if, if the U.S. lost – the President's Cup, would you care more the next time around? Um, I put that out as a poll on Twitter, and most people said no. But I, I maybe a loss, I'm not, I'm not going to pull for us to lose, but maybe a loss, may, maybe the international team like beating the brakes off the U.S. team would make two years from now a little more interesting. Because I just feel like every year it's just the same story, different verse, and I'm just well, not a interested. a loss would always make it more interesting. I mean, you, you can equate yeah. it to other sports. I mean, in any sort of rivalry where the the one team is dominating for years it's it's not interesting so um i mean as a matter of fact i, I don't want the u.s to lose but if they do this year all i can think of is it's going to be a little more interesting when it's in the u.s in a few more years so i don't know and it's also going to put more pressure on the Ryder cup team you know if they lose this um after losing the Ryder cup that it's going to make that even more interesting because yeah. the you know these guys are, are now coming off two straight losses. Yeah. Um, that's that's even more compelling. So we'll see. Yeah, I wonder how serious they. Well, I don't know. I'm sure they take they take it seriously. You just you just don't see a lot of these guys play. Uh, you know, you don't see a lot of these guys play leading up to the Presidents Cup like we do Ryder Cup. I mean, you you don't see, uh, you know. Yeah, you just you don't. Webb Simpson's not playing right now. DeChambeau, Brooks isn't. Um, yeah, I don't know. All right, well that's it. That's the putter throw. That's all we can do on that. I'm not. I'm over it. So, I'm all right. The, the phrase, the secret phrase. What's the secret phrase? I don't know. I thought. I thought. We had some listeners coming up with some ideas. I can't. No, with all. Nothing. Nothing's. Nothing's any good. Um, how about we're having dinner with El Toucan's sister on Wednesday night? I don't know why I keep wanting to involve his sister. I don't even know if he has a sister. Um, a hermana. El Toucan's sister just arrived. (laughs) Okay, we'll go with that. So we're going to go, it's like a week-to-week thing? Yeah, yeah. Like, because it's, okay, okay. Yeah, it's fun. El Toucan's sister just arrived. Okay. That's our secret phrase on Instagram and Twitter. If we have caddy or player insight that you need to know before locking in your bets and your DFS lineups. There you go. Doing, Doing a service to the people. We're, we're just the best. Props to you, Pat, for being awesome and uh, just being you, man. Same to you.
Thank you. By the way, I like your the the sweat like throw show off the sweatshirt really quick. Dude, this sweatshirt yeah, this is, is BA. This is a new one we this got. Is a, the this is a here. champion sweatshirt. Hold on, let me tell me when you can see the back because it's kind of hard for me to hold on. It's kind of hard for me. To, right now, yep, addict. Addict, just addict. So then people go, what kind of addict? And you just go, <laughs> wouldn't you like to know? <clears throat> so there you go. Those aren't in the shop yet, but maybe they will be. Good to see you, man, as always. Thank you, listeners. May your screens be green. See you!